<laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> that was almost terrible. Almost, almost blew the engine there, but that's okay. I didn't. That's the important part. Oh, what the? What the oh no, it's <laughs> raining! Friend, we're getting straight into it in the first test. I don't know if people can see, but it's raining right now. But because we are true MX-5 enthusiasts, maybe, we have the roof down. All right. As we should. Shall we launch it? Let's see which one is faster. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour. MX-5, BRZ. Save me. Oh, Come on. God. Oh, nice shift. I like that. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Oh, beautiful shifting. Oh, 0.107.36 seconds. That's pretty good. Actually, not too bad considering we're both sitting in here. Let's test the BRZ. Now we have a roof over our heads in the BRZ. We're going to put the car into track mode because this thing loves to spin its wheels and hates the wet even more than the MX-5. <sighs> Kiss me. I'm scared. Hopefully we do this. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, power. Come on. Ooh. Zero to 100 in seven seconds flat, which is actually pretty good considering no it's trash. wet and you saw that traction. Of course, Jacob, launching at 0 to 100 is not the be all and end all. Let's do some other tests. Let's. Listen, outride speed is not necessarily the best test between these two cars, but something that you should note is definitely the price. So you can get in to a Mazda MX-5 with a soft top for actually pretty cheap, about $38,000 before on-roads, that's good. This one here, however, is the MX-5 GT RS, and that means it's pretty expensive, but you do get some really, really good inclusions. This one will set you back about forty-eight. dollars Oofed, big oofed. But then if you take a look at the stunning Subaru BRZ over here, that is actually more expensive to get into. It's about 40 grand, and in my opinion, that base spec is not the greatest. If you wanna see what the comparable GR86 is like as a base model, go check out that review at the end of this video. But this one here does come in substantially cheaper than the MX-5. $41,500 or so. If you want to add the automatic to that, it's about a three and a half grand cost. So keep that in mind. Essentially what I'm saying is the BRZ is cheaper and spec for spec, the MX-5 will always come out more expensive. But in my opinion, I think I just like the looks of the MX-5 a bit more, man. I'd have to agree. It is a really beautiful car. It's got the Kodo design language. That's all about simplicity. And you can tell, right? Look how thin these headlights are. I will say, Coming to simplicity, kind of a bit, a bit like cost savings, because you've got some incandescent bulbs for your turning signals. Oh, a bit too simple there. You do get some bright LED lights there, and you've got a pretty simple looking daytime running light. I love this paint job, man. Oh, crystal soul red. I think it's soul crystal red or something like that. Whatever it is, it is beautiful. The only issue with it is that because it's so intricate, if you crash one of these, it's actually quite hard to paint match. <laughs> That's something you'll find online. Look at this Mazda logo there. You've also got that smiley face. It's part of the MX-5. It makes you, makes you feel warm and fuzzy on the inside, Jacob. Real nice and giddy. Oh, look at that splitter down there, but Coming to the Subaru BRZ, this is definitely where you see it's a bit more aggressive. Same with the GR86. You've got these really cool headlights here. They are quite bright. They've got a nice, simple daytime running light there. The grille looks pretty cool as well. Actually very similar to the MX-5. Splitted down the bottom too. You can see that they're pretty similar in their design because they're both trying to be you know, cheap sports cars. We like that. And let us know what you guys think. We can't tell which is brighter, the MX-5's headlights or the Subaru BRZ. So let us know in the comment section below what you think. Now. If we come to the side of the BRZ, you're gonna notice these beautiful forged alloy wheels. These wheels are 18 inches and forged alloy is really good because it helps to reduce the unsprung mass of the car. They're also wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires, which are really, really good tires. But as you're gonna see, this thing loves to let loose at the rear. I also love the simplicity of the design of this. It's a really cool, swoopy, coopy, loopy. Jacob, I think you're going a bit loopy. I feel like it. Let's check out the side of the MX-5. Now, being the GT RS, you actually get these 17-inch BBS forged alloy wheels. They look amazing, man. Oh, so sporty. And you've also got these Brembo brakes. 100% worth it. Guys, I almost had a crash over the weekend because someone went straight through a red light and this thing just stopped instantly. I was so impressed. And now forever, I will say, get the upgraded brakes just in case something like that happens. Oh, Jacob. Check that out. It's almost no curves. I mean, it's all curves. There's no sharp edges. That's part of the Kodo design language. Obviously, this is the soft top. You can get this as an RF, which we have reviewed. And that one was the base model RF. So if you want to see what a base model MX-5 is like, go watch that review after this one. But this soft top here is super easy to open and close. No, it doesn't look the best when it's closed, but 
whatever, you can have it open most of the time anyway. I certainly have. <laughs> Even when it's raining. Even when it's raining, cut to that video. Oh my ah! God! Ah! Jacob, let's check out the bum. Listen here, man. I love Listening. that. I love that. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so like 1990s, but I'm, I'm happy it's there. That's your radio antenna if you didn't know. You've also got a reverse camera. This uh, doesn't have the best technology, as you're gonna see. But it, that's it, a plus, it, yeah. <laughs> as MX-5 owners will say. Yeah. Oh, it's meant for simplicity. Well, it's a bit grainy and, you know, anyway, we'll come back to that. Look down there, Jacob. Dual exhaust in a second. We're gonna compare the exhaust sounds and then coming to the back of the BRZ. I think objectively from the back, this just looks better. It is a very nice design. It's a really nice design. I like the LED tail lights here, by the way. Halogen bulbs at the back of that one as well. Come on, come on. You got BRZ there, Subaru badge, Subaru badge. You got your backup camera there. Being a newer car, this does have a way better backup camera system. And then down the bottom, you get dual exhaust. But how do they sound, Jacob? Let's find out. Let us know in the comment section which one you think sounded better. Jacob, let's check out the interiors. Straight off the bat, I am both impressed and disappointed simultaneously <laughs> with the interior of the BRZ and even the GR86. Now in the top spec S that we have here, you do get this nice Alcantara-like material all across the interior. You also get upgraded seats. These seats are really, really comfortable. They look great too. Definitely more bolstered than that in the MX-5. But then there are some other things like the build quality just doesn't feel amazing. Like this light structure here, it looks like it's about to come out. Uh, the steering wheel does feel really nice. The buttons on it feel a little bit cheap, but I don't really care. Up in front of you, you get a really cool digital instrument cluster. And when you put it into track mode, it puts on this really cool tachometer. So I like that. The infotainment display is nothing fantastic, but it's certainly better than that in the MX-5. I just like how functional it is. It does have wide Apple CarPlay and wide Android Auto, not wireless though. Uh, practicality in here, it completely outshines that in the MX-5. The previous BRZ had an issue where uh, it had like an open area here and it was really uncomfortable, but now they've kind of padded this off and it's got a nice armrest, it opens up nicely. There's a couple of cup holders, that's good to see, with two USB-A ports and an AUGs in. You've also got a couple more cup holders in the door. So now you get four, which is actually quite impressive for such a small car. Inside here, you get a pretty decent amount of space. Air conditioning controls work really well. I love this like digi analog setup, the six speed manual. Now, it's not as good as that in the MX-5. It's got like double the length of throw. So even though it's fine, it's just not as good. It doesn't feel as notchy. It feels a bit, eh. I agree. Yeah, it's not the best I've used. Of course, it also has two seats in the back, though this is a two plus two. You will never fit a full-size adult in the back, or if you do, they will have to be a very small full-size adult and you will have to compromise up front. It's good to have in a pinch or good to throw stuff in the back, but certainly a lot more practical than that in the MX-5. Jacob, let's check that out. Jacob, mate, it's a bit dark. I uh, can't really see you properly, mate. Ah, oh, <laughs> well, thank God I can do that. Oh, cinematography. Bam. Now my shirt is off, my top is off. Not my shirt. Oh, oh, this steering wheel. There's something about the interior of the MX-5 that just feels supremely more premium than the BRZ. I think it's just that everything is put together really well. Everything is solid. There's like no rattles. You get this beautiful like body colored panel on the inside. So that matches whatever color your car is. And it just feels more premium, whether it's faux leather or real leather, it feels real to me. These seats are pretty good. Definitely not quite as good as in the BRZ, just in terms of bolstering, but they feel nice. Better yet, you've got speakers inside of them. If you get the RF and I think above, then you get the Bose sound system and it just sounds wonderful in here. Look, practicality in here is not the best, okay? So you get what is probably the world's smallest center armrest, but hey, at least you get one. Look at these cup holders, you get two of them. And now you can put that one over here so you can actually reach it because if you've got your Macca's drink or coffee, look at that, I prepared one earlier. That's easy to grab. That is not, that's a bit harder, but hey, look, it works fine, you get used to it. You do have a pretty big storage area here, actually. That can hold a few tidbits. I say it's big, it's like relatively big. It would be like the size of the center armrest in most other cars, but hey, better than a slap in the eye with a dead fish, Jacob. Up front, you get a little storage area for your phone, although it doesn't fit the latest phones. That's how you can kind of tell that this car is a little bit older. You've also got some manual dials here, but I don't know, it's kind of endearing. I almost, I almost love it. Uh, the infotainment display, is it's looking and feeling a bit old. You can use this little controller down here, or you can use it as a touchscreen, at least while the handbrake's up. As soon as you put it down, 
you can't actually use it anymore as a touch screen. Uh, as I say, that's for safety, but uh, when you're doing this to, you know, A, B, you get buddy RSI. C. I love the gauges, it's analog. It's not DG, but they're some of the best analog out there. In the center is a giant tachometer. On the right is your speed, because let's be honest, you're not really gonna be breaking the limits of, of speed in your MX-5, but you are gonna be taking this thing to its 7,500 RPM red line. Same as the BRZ, but very, very cool. It's just, I don't know, I love that. Two USB ports up front, nothing else. <laughs> That's it. Minimalism. That was a whole interior, but I love it, man. It's so, I just love it. It's just all it needs to be, fit for purpose. Fit for purpose. But I do have to say, if you're gonna be living with this day to day, the BRZ is a lot easier to live with just because of how much more space it has. Yeah, that's the reality of it. Let's check out the boot space. If we're being totally honest with ourselves, the practicality of the BRZ absolutely trumps that of the MX-5, continues to do so. Take a look at this, oops, there, boop press a little button, open it up. There you will see 201 liters of boot space. That's actually pretty decent, like it's never gonna blow your mind, uh, but it looks huge compared to the MX-5 you'll see in a second. You do get a full-size spare wheel. That's really cool, man. Full-size alloy spare as well. Yeah, you don't get that in the GR86. So if you are traveling with a car, then this is probably gonna be the better one anyway. And of course you could put down the back seats and get even more space if you need it. It's actually surprisingly practical. Not the MX-5 though. So, I mean, whoever would have thought that the MX-5 wasn't a very practical car, you press the button under here. Oh, you're gonna always search for it. Opens up, yeah. You really have to go looking. Uh, 131 liters of boot space. You could probably get a small suitcase in there. Anything else? No. You'll get a duffel bag and like a little travel pack. Great for a weekend trip. But as a daily, that kind of makes it a bit difficult, especially considering on the inside, you don't get much storage either. They do their best and I give them credit for that. But uh, yeah, it's not the best story, is it, Jacob? Not at all. What about the engines? Let's talk about that. Both the MX-5 and the BRZ have this philosophy of uh, coming to the same conclusion, but from pretty different angles. So, powering the Mazda MX-5 is a two-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder. It's an inline four-cylinder, so you can see that it's longitudinally mounted, and that's actually behind the wheel. So this is technically a front mid-engined sports car. That's really impressive in a package that costs less than 50,000 Australian dollars, especially in this spec. It puts out 135 kilowatt of power, 205 newton meters of torque. Under that is very substantial, but considering this thing weighs just over a ton, it actually shifts pretty damn well, as you saw at the beginning of the video. Now, the BRZ is kind of like copy my homework in a way. Of course, the MX-5 came out well before the BRZ. But this generation of BRZ has an upgraded engine. It's gone from 2 litres to 2.4 litres, and it now uses what is essentially a WRX engine without a turbo on it. It's also a four-cylinder, but of course, it is a boxer engine. That means the pistons go... It's kind of cool. Like, they just... It's a very different type of engine. But again, it comes to the same conclusion. 174 kilowatt of power, 250 newton meters of torque. So, naturally, this thing is more powerful. It is a little bit heavier at about 1.25 tons. That's still very light though. So this thing has about 10% more kilowatt per ton versus the MX-5, and that is all pretty impressive. Now, you can get both of these with an automatic option. They come as standard with manual. I wouldn't do that in the MX-5 because you lose the limited slip differential. I wouldn't do that in the Subaru BRZ because it's just- You lose fun. the fun. Yeah, you lose the fun. <laughs> But you get like way more safety. That's the other thing, guys, safety tech. I will leave that for our full written review on carsource.com, but suffice to say, the BRZ is lacking in a lot of safety tech, even compared to the old MX-5. Jacob, enough of that. Let's see how these things drive. Alrighty, friend, driving. The MX-5. Oh, some might call it a Miata. <laughs> some would be wrong. This is a bloody MX-5. Yes, I look like the Michelin man right now, but it's freezing, right? And I just know we're gonna get comments being like, oh, you didn't drive with the roof down. Fine, it's, it's almost winter, it's freezing cold, but we'll do it. It's like minus 30 degrees here in Melbourne today, and we've got the roof off because you're a people pleaser. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's quite minus 30. All Next right. week when we're filming a car review and we both have the cold, <laughs> We'll blame you guys. We will blame you. One week later. Here we are with the updated Mazda 6. Yes, I'm sick, but at least that sounds like six. But what I won't blame them for is just how much fun this car is. Oh yeah. It's just one of those staples. I don't even know what, like. It's great. Unreal. It's one of my favorite cars. And you know what? Even though we're complaining about the cold, we got the heated seat on. Let's just put on the heater a little bit. And this is what this car is about. Bro, my butt is warm, but my head is freezing. 
just you know how it should be. Top of my head is about to freeze off. Maybe we should have worn a beanie as well. Oh, I shouldn't have gotten haircuts this week. <laughs> I don't want to go too oh. fast because it is quite uh, wet today. But I will say, even in the wet, this thing is so perfectly balanced. And in my opinion, that's where it beats out the BRZ. I actually completely agree. That 50-50 weight distribution is beautiful. Beautiful. Now, this thing also has a better suspension setup. Double wishbone, front and rear. That is a really high quality setup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the BRZ has a McPherson strut up at the front. And even though that is a better setup because it's aluminium versus the GR86 that I'm also driving this week, I don't know, man. I feel like we're in Mad Max Fury Road, like going into a bloody sandstorm. But I, I would I would genuinely be worried doing this in the BRZ, and we'll test that out in a second. Oh. But, uh, you know, that thing is really tail happy, even though its tyres have been replaced, I'm told, four times. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. That was almost terrible. Almost, almost blew the engine there, but that's okay. I didn't. That's the important part. Oh, what the... What the oh no, it's <laughs> raining! Oh. Turns out this is not very good off-road. Who would have thought? Oh, it sounds pretty nice though. Because unlike the BRZ, it's a real sound. Oh no! Oh ah! my god! Ah! What is... Ah! <laughs> Listen, this is what the people want. They want a top-down experience. At it's that pouring down. Ah! Can I say, I absolutely love... I can't see you anymore. I absolutely love how this thing... It just has one of the best braking packages now with these Brembo brakes. You know, it saved me from an accident. Oh, did, oh yeah, it did. That's right, yeah. Some idiot pulled out in a red light and this car stopped instantly. Let's go up saucy corner, bro. Okay. Oh. Okay, come on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. I got okay. no grab handle. Okay. Oh. That's what happens when it starts to rain. It's actually amazing oh. up these hills. It's so much fun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the BRZ will do even more than oh, that. Oh, man. Oh my god, everyone's staring at us. Like, who is who are these idiots with their roof off? Why it's would they be staring out. at us? It's just raining a little bit, okay? I don't I don't know if you guys can see in this camera behind us, it is pouring down. But I actually don't feel like I'm getting very wet. No, but then when you stop, you get yeah. soaked. <laughs> We're just going to keep moving. That's oh. the, uh, the motto of the video. All right, the moral of the story here, while it's still pissing down rain, we've got to jump into the BRZ, is that this just handles, like better than a BRZ. Yeah. It's a better all-round sports car, even though that is a faster car, objectively speaking. But we'll see. But <laughs> one way to find out, maybe I'll eat my words. <laughs> At least we'll be dry. At least we'll be dry. Let's do it. Alrighty, friend. Ooh. Driving. Oh, that sounds so cool. It's funny, because I, I kind of hate it. I'm not going to lie. I really don't uh, like it. Uh, now I'm turning on my manual windshield wipers. Don't you feel like a peasant? Come on, this is top spec. I'll tell you what, straight off the bat, this is faster. Oh yeah. Like, significantly faster than the MX-5. At least it feels it. Once you're actually rolling, we might have done a couple of uh, rolling races. And once you're rolling, it's actually pretty similar. Yeah. But like, from low down, this definitely has more torque. They've really fixed that mid-range kind of torque dead zone in the uh, 86. Yeah, the BRZ, sorry. really have. And yeah. you can see it right there in the center. I love that little uh, torque and power graph. Yeah, I have it permanently on. It's just really cool. So that would have been our dead zone there. Yeah. And we get power for days. Oh, the back end. So unlike the MX-5, this doesn't have a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. They call it nearly perfect. <laughs> Was it like 53, 47 or e something? Exactly right. So this thing is actually quite a lot more uh, tail happy than the MX-5. And you really notice that. Like you turn a corner and it doesn't matter if it's dry. If you put your foot down more than 50%, you are going to lose the back end. Which for a lot of people is quite fun. <laughs> but for me, when I'm driving around and I'm dailying it, it, it can get a little bit tiresome thinking, Am I going to lose the rear end right now? But, I mean, it does drive amazingly well. 
their ride right comfort's down. really nice. Really good, better than the MX-5. Despite oh, yeah. the MX-5 having a better technical suspension setup, this has been first in strut, the front, and a double wishbone at the rear. I don't know, this just, just kind of glides a bit kind more. Kind of glides a bit more. You clearly have a bit more, uh, a bit more play in the body. So it does, I'm not gonna say body rolls, but it definitely does, uh, oh, I've gotta be careful there. I feel like it's very similar to the MX-5 in terms of body roll. Yeah, maybe honest. actually. Like the old MX-5 that. would probably have a lot more body roll than this. Oh. But this is so much better than the last BRZ. It's not funny. Yeah. But I'm really worried to like put my foot down too much around the corners. <laughs> so you weren't scared in the MX-5 at all? I was a lot less scared. That felt, I felt a lot more confident behind that wheel. But this one, you know, it just, it does like to slip out. And that goes to show that 50-50 weight distribution makes a huge difference. Massive. And you're going to notice, by the way, the tyre pressure monitor uh, warning there. This has just had its wheel replaced, uh, and or one of them, and they can't reset it for some reason. And yes, we know there's a reset button in the glove box not working. So don't worry about that. We don't actually have bad tyre pressure. All right, friend. Ugh. This is where I'm a little bit scared. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Saucy corner. Are you, little, are you ready for this? My little pickle. I don't know. I don't know if I am. We're about to find out. Just be careful. Oh, jeez. Really is bogged down there. It didn't want to give us any power. Oh. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yep. <laughs> I don't think I am. Oh. <laughs> that is a lot more than the MX-5, bro. <laughs> oh my god, that was ridiculous. We've got all the traction oh, settings completely off. I have not touched traction. That's what I mean though, you know? <laughs> if you give it any sort of push around a turn, it will lose the rear end, which a lot of people are gonna love. I it's, don't know. It just doesn't do it for me on the road. You doesn't know, do you it for me on the road. You can't do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't love that. Yeah, it's a wet day to be fair, but you could see how the MX-5 did compared to this. And you were being a lot more aggressive on the throttle with the MX-5. I really was. Look, I think this is still an absolutely fantastic sports car and it is a cheaper sports car with more practicality. And no doubt it's a lot of fun. And it's still a lot of fun. And it does, even though that has this egregious engine noise, that is all fake by the way. This thing hardly makes a sound. Yeah. It's still kind of cool. You know what I mean? It is cool. Feels like a sports car. And for the people that want to buy this car, I get it. All right, should we get into our final thoughts? I think so. Alrighty, Jacob. So, MX-5 versus BRZ or GR86, essentially the same car under the skin. If I'm being totally, totally honest, if I had one car to choose, it's gonna be the BRZ. What? And that is because of practicality. I could not live with my, you know, grudel dog and girlfriend with just the MX-5. It's just not practical enough. However, if I did have access to a second car, like an SUV or a hatchback, whatever, I would 100% go for the MX-5. Not because the BRZ is no fun, but just because of the topless thrills that you get in the MX-5. There is simply nothing like it, and it is just a better balanced car. I enjoy it more driving around. The BRZ freaks me out because it just loses its rear end all the time. Same with the GR86, but if you enjoy that, you're gonna really enjoy that. Jacob, what do you think? I couldn't have said it better. I mean, the MX-5 is a better balanced car. It's just as fun as the BRZ. I would personally rather the MX-5. I think so. But let us know what you guys think down in the comment section. Just blow that like button, share the video with a friend as well. We would love to see this blow up, go viral, and uh, so I can feed my kids. <laughs> my dog, he's a very cute dog. Click over there if you wanna watch our GR86 review. We kinda slammed that one. And also over there if you wanna watch our MX-5 RF review. We also have a full review of this one out on the channel now as well if you wanna go watch that. Ciao for now. Bye bye.